Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackYear.com, and I'm here today to show you what I believe are the 10 best full-face motorcycle helmets over $600. This is our fourth installment in our Spring 2020 Full Face Helmet Buying Guide. We've internally dubbed this tier Ultra Premium, and for good reason. Every helmet on this table is over $600. The highest retail on this table is $1699 with the AGV Pista GP Double R helmet, right? That is a lot of jack for a helmet. Tremendous engineering and technology is represented on this table. The point of this video is to articulate the features and benefits they all share in common and then really focus on the features and benefits where they separate from one another to help you choose the helmet that makes the most sense for you. All the helmets you see on the table have been handpicked by myself or my staff here at STG. I have ridden in basically everything on the table with the exception of the GT Air 2, have not ridden in that. And I've not ridden any one of the, either of the current models of the Corsa R or the Pista GP Double R. But I did have a previous version Corsa that I've ridden in a tremendous amount. Realistically, the helmets are super close. So I understand the riding experience for all these helmets quite well. And it's going to help me get you pointed in the right direction. Our name is SportbikeTrackYear.com. Our focus here is sport riding. Sport riding on the street track days, and of course, road racing. For that reason, we're only talking about full face helmets as they are the best choice for those riding styles. Also important to let you know, if you don't see it on the table, we simply just don't believe it made the cut. Something else I wanna to touch on very quickly before we dive in to the head-to-head -head comparisons. We're gonna subdivide this. It's gonna be very brief at this tier, but any helmet that has a drop-down inner screen, that really changes the dynamics of that helmet. For that reason, I don't wanna compare that to a traditional full face. They're two different products. Caleb's gonna put a link in here to a video. It's a very short one that we did, articulating the differences between having a drop-down inner screen and not. Just what does it change with the helmet? Also, fit and sizing. If you're gonna invest this kind of money in, in a helmet, Invest some time in taking a good, accurate measurement. Use the size chart. Get a sense for what your head shape is. Because if the helmet doesn't fit, it doesn't matter if you spent $1,699 on it or not. It's going to reduce the ability it has to protect you, and it's going to degrade its overall performance. The biggest mistake most riders make is purchasing a helmet that, that is too large for them, right? It's just, it's more comfortable out of the gate, so people tend to gravitate towards that. When you get a helmet that's too big for you, it reduces the ability it has to protect you, like I already said. And when it comes to performance while riding, it has negative impacts there. A quick, quick one would be if you're gonna do a head check, right, and the helmet's too big, the wind is going to force the helmet over, obstruct your vision. You go to get in a tuck on a sport bike and the helmet's too big, Naturally, it's going to ride too low on your brow and obstruct your vision. That is no bueno. Now let's talk about road noise, you know, air noise. If the helmet's too large, it doesn't seal up around the base of your skull, around your neck. The neck roll of the helmet is really meant to help quiet the helmet down, and it's going to be a lot louder than it needs to be. So please check that video out. Let's get a measurement and get you into the right size the first time. Okay, you'll notice we're missing a couple of helmets from the table. Quick explanation, we had four Arai models up here. At the end of the day, the three that I removed from the table, they differ from the Corsair X. I want to focus in this grouping on helmets that offer an intermediate oval head shape, which is the most common in North America, fits over 90% of the riders spot on. Arai is the only company currently that's manufacturing helmets to different interior head shapes. The Signet X offers a long oval, the Quantum X offers a round oval. The Defiant is just a little bit of a different helmet. For that reason, we're gonna come back after this segment, break down the four rise and just explain that a little closer. In this part, we're gonna talk about things these helmets share in common. Then we're gonna circle back and we're gonna focus on features and benefits they have where they really start to separate from one another. Introducing the players. 
We have the AGV Pista GPRR helmet. Retail is $1399 to $1699. The AGV Corsa R helmet. Retail is $799 to $999. The Arai Corsair X helmet. Retail is $849 to $979. We have the Bell Raystar Flex DLX. Retail spans from $734 to like $779. Shark Racer Pro. Retail is from $650 to about $900. And then last but not least, we have the Shoei X14 helmet. Retail there is $781 to $889. Solids to graphics. Things these helmets share in common. There are no injection molded plastic helmet shells in this price tier. Everything is using either a carbon shell or a fiberglass composite style shell. Each one of these helmets, as I said earlier, intermediate oval head shape. They all also run true to their respective size charts. Double D-ring retention system for each one of the helmets on the table. Glasses compatibility. All six of these helmets allowed me to slide glasses in. Of the six, I will say the Shoei X14 was the only one that, that wouldn't allow me to get the glasses right on the bridge of my nose. It had channels in there that really held the glasses. So they just kind of hovered above the bridge of my nose. It's compatible. The others just seem to allow you to put the glasses where you wanted them to be if that's important to you. If you plan to install a universal Bluetooth communicator device, these four helmets here, the Arai, the Bell, the Shark, and the Shoei, they have pockets hollowed out behind the cheek pads that allow for installation of those speakers. The two AGV models on the table, of course, are on the piece to GPRR. There are no pockets behind the cheek pads. It's going to make the install really difficult if you plan to do it. And then I'm going to qualify it and say, this is a pure racing helmet. Sure, you could wear it on the street if you want, but who the hell is carving up a $1,700 helmet to put in a universal Bluetooth communicator device? Ventilation. When you're shopping in this tier, you can expect an excellent amount of ventilation. The reality is all four, or all six of these helmets are going to keep you cool when the temperatures rise. They're going to do a great job for you, right? Of the six on the table, this one is going to move the most air. The vents are all wide open. There are no switchable vents on this helmet. It does come with plugs to put in there in case it's raining out, right? If you want to do that, flows more air than anything. It does, of course, make just a little bit more noise. This flows a tremendous amount of air as well. That's the model that I had, right? And I remember how extreme that was. Once again, a little noise production from these two. The other four, excellent ventilation. Once again, none of these is going to allow you to burn up. Let's talk about noise, right? Some riders are sensitive to that. The quietest helmet on the table is for sure the Shark Race R Pro, followed closely by the Bell Raystar Flex DLX. From there, I would say the Corsair X and the Shoei X14, those are really close to one another when it comes to noise production, with the noisiest of the two being the two AGVs that are on the table. Interiors in the helmet. All of these helmets use high-end fabrics. They all feel great against the skin, moisture wicking, antimicrobial, all that good stuff. Go ahead and look at the spec charts that are on the website for each of the helmets. You know, another thing at this price point and in this tiering that's important to me is going to be field of vision. Every one of these helmets offers excellent field of vision, both in a tuck up in the brow area where it kind of chokes you off, as well as peripheral vision. With that said, and you can see it when you look at these things head on, I mean, look at that. That is absolutely massive. If one is bigger than all the rest, Certainly, the AGV offers the largest field of vision. None of these for me were an issue, right? But if you want the biggest there is, that is certainly it. When I come back, we're going to talk about some things that separate these from one another. The AGV Pista GP RR helmet. This weighed 3.3 pounds in a size medium small on our digital shipping scale. This helmet is ECE as well as DOT certified. They use four shell sizes, full carbon shell on this helmet. Unique features and benefits. It has a drink system built into it. So if you have a suit with a race hump that has a drink bag, you're good to go. It has a bite valve. It locks in right up here in the chin bar of the helmet. Kind of cool, right? 
if you're like most of us and you don't need that, it slides right out. So that's not a fixed part of the helmet. That's important. It can be just a normal helmet too. Emergency release cheek pads, all these offer that. Tunable fit. The crown pad of this helmet, you're able to like relocate the three legs in there to really dial in that fit to make it the best for you. More tunability, it comes with a package that has all these pieces of foam with adhesive on the back and this little instruction booklet. You're able to pull the interior out and then stick these behind the pads and essentially really tune the fit at any point in that liner. That is definitely a pretty bitchin' feature. That's something that I have not previously seen before. This is going to ship complete with a Max Vision pin lock fog free insert as well as a kit of race tear offs to get you started. The AGV Corsa R helmet, 3.4 pounds in a size medium small on our shipping scale here. Four different shell sizes. Shell material here is a blend of carbon fiber as well as fiberglass. ECE and DOT certified. However, I will say I could not find on this helmet the ECE sticker on the AGV brochure and stuff and the website. It says that it's ECE certified. I just want to make sure that I clarify that. Fit for these two helmets, right? We're going to talk about these together because they're almost the same. Very intermediate oval requires some effort to get it on and pull it back off. If that's something you're sensitive to, then this would not be the first choice for you. They do fit really well. When I look at these helmets, these are just pure motorcycle racing helmets. All right, I want you to know that up front. Also, the four shell sizes they use, one thing they do that's really unique is they separate the medium into two different sizes. You have the medium small and then you have medium large. They've broken it in half. Per their size chart, at 58 centimeters intermediate oval, I would be technically a medium large. I've always preferred the fit I get from the medium small in these. The medium large fits good too, but I like to get the helmet good and tight. I would wear a small in most helmets if I could get the damn thing on, but I can't. But the way they broke down the, the shell and they separated it, I am able to get that medium small and that's the reason we have medium smalls on the table now. I want to make sure I broke that down for you guys. This ships with a clear shield, pin lock, max vision insert. You're going to get a packet of tear offs to go with it to get you started. Another unique feature this offers is the crown liner for this helmet is double sided and reversible. The side that you see right now, that is meant for hot weather, moisture wicking, right? Help to keep you cool. The other side, you would flip it over, and I've never tried this, so don't hold me to it, but it's supposed to be for colder weather, maybe some heat generating type of fabric, right, to help keep you warmer. Something else that I want to point out with these helmets, if you look at this cutout right here, that is like a, a designed to help prevent collarbone breakage, right? Pretty common that the helmet can make contact with the collarbone in a wreck. That's how a lot of them actually get broken. And with both these helmets, they've kind of shaped the shell to help avoid that. The Arai Corsair X helmet weighs 3.65 pounds in a size medium on our shipping scale here. They use five different shell sizes. It is Snell as well as DOT certified. The shell material is going to be a blend of fiberglass and other fibers. It's hand laid in Japan by Craftsman, right? Arai is a very unique company, family owned, family operated, and they have principles that they simply stick to, they believe in and are committed to wholeheartedly. The round shape of this helmet is one of those principles. If you look at all their helmets, you'll notice the shape for every one is very similar. They believe the round shape increases the structural strength of the helmet, which is great for the big impacts. Right? It has a multi-density EPS to help manage the energy in the event of a crash. And also, when you're sliding after a crash, round is more likely to glance off things. Right, If you have some imperfections in the pavement or a curb or something, it's more likely that'll glance off it than having a sharp edge that's going to catch on something and cause a redirection of energy. Right, So something they believe in wholeheartedly. This helmet ships with a clear shield and a pin lock Max Vision insert. I've got a dark smoke on it right now. Interior fit. As I said, intermediate oval. The on-off effort of this helmet, as compared to all the helmets on the table, is bar none the easiest one. Arai opened up the opening of the shell at the bottom and then changed the cheek pad system. They did this a few years back. 
the, the cheek pad system is done in such a way that it, it almost has like a spring effect to it, right? It makes it easy to pull it on, but as soon as you get it over, the cheek pads just kind of spring into place and really cradle underneath your jaw and really give you that good racy fit you're looking for. So if that's something that's a hot button for you, this one stands out from the rest for sure. The Japanese quality is also very nice. Interior fit is tunable to a certain degree. The crown pad as well as the cheek pad have five millimeter peel away layers you're able to remove to give yourself more space in the crown as well as the cheeks if you so desire. The Bell Raystar Flex DLX helmet. This weighed 3.35 pounds in a medium on our shipping scale. It is Snell and DOT certified. Carbon composite shell material is used. Six different shell sizes. That is the most of all the helmets on the table. The fit of this helmet is definitely very racy. Requires a little effort on, a little effort off with an excellent fit. One of the things that really makes this stand out from the rest is going to be the EPS material they're using. They use three different materials in the EPS of this helmet, right? One of them, or actually two of them, are flexible. You have a little bit of traditional EPS, which can only give one time. The other two materials they have, they have some spring effect to it. With that said, when you first put this helmet on, what I notice with these is, you know, it kind of feels really snug right out of the gate, and you literally give it five or 10 minutes, and it just kind of dials itself in and conforms. It's not just about the fit with that material. It's also about energy management. That system helps to manage low speed, medium, and high speed impacts at a high level, and also some rotational management because there are three independent layers that are basically attached to, to one another, right? So they can move just a little bit within one another. Another huge value add with this is this helmet ships with their Pro Tint Shield. This reacts to sunlight. It starts off clear. As it's exposed to sunlight, it tints to pretty much a dark smoke shield. I've ridden with it quite a bit. It's a $140 shield. It's really expensive. And I got to tell you, man, it works. And it's just nice because as the conditions vary, right, you get some races where you start early in the morning, right, or it's a fall day and there's just not a lot of sunlight. No worries. No need to switch a shield. You're good to go right out of the gate. Something else it offers that's super unique, magnetic cheek pads. You literally, they hold themselves in with magnets. Super cool feature. They never migrate out of the way. This helmet offers some of the coolest technology of all the helmets that you see on the table. A lot of value with the belt. The Shark Racer Pro. This helmet weighs 3.35 pounds in a medium on our shipping scale. This is the fiberglass version. They offer a full carbon shell too. It's like a tenth or so lighter in weight. Okay, it's gonna come in more around 3.2. They use two different shell sizes. These are ECE as well as DOT certified. Let's talk about fit of this helmet. This one is more in line with all the other helmets on the table with the exception of the right. It requires a little effort to get it on and to get it off and a nice race fit when you have it on. That's really the fit you want from any one of these helmets that are on the table. What makes the Shark special? We already pretty much hit on that. Their aerodynamics and their quietness while you're out there riding while still ventilating very well is what makes this helmet special. It is spooky quiet for a helmet that moves this much air. Also very stable in the wind. You know, you're in a tuck behind the bubble and you pop out, this thing moves around or buffets very, very little. Shark invests a ton of energy and resources into engineering the aerodynamics for this helmet and it really shows. Quality fabrics are used. You see this one's dirty as hell. I've ridden this one a ton. Really enjoy this helmet. It feels comfortable against the skin, controls the odor. This overall is a very nice package. You don't see a lot of them out there. It's not as common as the rest, but rest assured, this is a great lid as well. The Shoei X14. This one weighed 3.75 pounds in a medium on our shipping scale. Four different shell sizes. It is Snell as well as DOT certified. Shell material is gonna be fiberglass composite, right? So high-end materials are used here. The fit of this helmet is rather racy, right? Like the other four, requires a little effort on and off, but gets you a good race fit once you do have the helmet on. Aerodynamics. With this helmet, Shoei has invested 
just like Shark, a tremendous amount of time engineering a very strong aerodynamic package. Some of these pieces you see here, the wings, you can actually get different versions so at even higher top speeds you can tune it a little bit. I don't know that that's really all that necessary, right? Because this helmet, as it sits right out of the box, is very stable at speed. You pop out of the bubble, this thing just does an amazing job. Unique features and benefits with this are going to be ventilated cheek pads, right? They intake up in here, kind of ventilates right in the cheek pad to work to keep the rider cooler and more comfortable. You're also able to adjust the position inside the helmet so that it's a little more open, raises up on your brow when you're in a tuck. I did that with this helmet when it was brand new, and you can definitely see a little bit of a difference. You know, if you're out racing on the track and you want that more open field of vision, refer to the initial review we did with this helmet. I adjusted it, and it certainly opens it up a little bit more. The fit of this helmet is very tunable. The liner is in different pieces. There are unique sizes available to really dial the fit of this helmet in. It's going to ship with a clear outer shield as well as a pin lock insert included. With Shoei, you know, where they really step out from the rest is going to be their overall final quality. Of all the helmets on the table, and these are all great, this one is just a little cut above in those fine details. Okay, the only helmet in this tier that has a drop-down inner screen, that is going to be the Shoei GT Air 2 helmet. This one retails from $599 to $699. It is DOT only certified, uses a fiberglass composite shell, three different shell sizes, okay? Retention system is going to be a quick-release retention system. Give you an idea of how far down that drop-down inner goes. Some people are sensitive to that. This is obviously a Shoei. Shoei's quality is class leading. They do an amazing job. You get this helmet, you put it next to any of the other helmets, and you can see just the fine little details. That's where Shoei really dominates. Granted, the spread is not large because these helmets are all great, but still, this one does stand out a bit. This is intended for street riding. I wouldn't use a helmet like this on the racetrack, personally. I don't think it's meant for that. It has a good field of vision for a helmet that has a drop-down in it. Remember, the extra thickness kind of chokes it off a little bit in the brow area. The ventilation for having a drop-down inner is going to be good. You've got a large intake vent up here. You've got your exhaust vents here in the back, another intake vent here. This helmet ships with a pin lock insert included for true fog-free performance. Some of the big news with this helmet is Cena and Shoei had partnered up. There is a Cena SRL2 that is a direct integration for this helmet. We have a video installing that. It is a real nice finished product, and that may be one of the highlights of this. So think of this as, you know, your ultra premium drop down inner full face helmet. As promised, here is our rye only segment. There's a lot of things these four helmets share in common, okay? Shell shape. They all offer that round shell shape. They all use handmade shells in Japan. They all ship with a clear shield as well as the pin lock insert. They all ventilate well. They all produce low levels of noise. They all have an easy on-off effort too, a lot like you see with the Corsair X. There are areas where these helmets are going to separate from one another and that's really what I want to focus on right now. These two have different interior head shapes where this one is just kind of a more purpose-built helmet. Price points. The Quantum X sells from $679 to $829. The Signet X is $679 to $869. And the Defiant X is $659 to $819. So once again, these are all represent a significant investment. Level of ventilation. Each one of these helmets ventilates well. Not on quite the same level as the Corsair X, but let me assure you, you're not going to be overheating in any one of these helmets. They all flow an excellent amount of air, and they are all relatively quiet considering how much air they flow. Fit in terms of on-off effort. All the Arai helmets are some of the easiest to get on and take back off. For riders that are sensitive to that, these are typically going to be your level best option. Let's focus now on the different shell shapes, which is going to be in the Quantum X and the Signet X. The Quantum X here on my right is more of a round oval. What's the difference between a round oval and an intermediate oval? Round oval, you're going to be closer, 
side to side as you are front to back than you would be with an intermediate oval, okay? So you clearly see that in the mirror, right? That you're from here to here and here to here is going to be pretty darn similar. Long oval, you're gonna be significantly longer front to back than you are side to side. These unique fit patterns can be a bit of a challenge. You know, if you're a seasoned rider and you've tried on a bunch of helmets and you know that you just have a difficult time getting a good fit. If you're long oval, typically, you'll put the helmet on after using the size chart, getting a good measurement, and you'll notice that front to back, you've just got hot spots front and back. Okay, that's because you're longer front to back than you are side to side. Conversely, with more of a round oval, right, you'll have hot spots on the sides if you're just too wide to fit an intermediate oval. Arai is the only company at this point that is offering helmets that are built to unique interior shapes. These address very specific needs, right? Don't look to these, right, if you're an intermediate oval because at the end of the day, they're not going to fit you as well as the Corsair X, the Regent X, or the Defiant X. The Defiant X, what makes this one different? I feel like I'm playing a shell game here right now. This is just kind of a purpose-built helmet. It's got a unique look to it. At the end of the day, it looks super similar to all the other helmets until you get to the chin bar. This just has a different ventilation system here, a different overall look. You know, say if you more cruiser, cafe style, if you think this is going to be more appropriate for you, that is simply what this is designed for. Beyond that, it is super similar to the other three helmets on the table. Hopefully this just gives you an idea of the difference between the four Arai models we have in this group. There you have it. We are wrapping this up. It's really difficult to organize all this information and all these thoughts, especially considering I've used all these helmets, right? For that reason, if you have anything that I did not address in this video, please leave that in the comments section. I answer all that stuff myself. Nobody knows these six helmets better than I do, and I'm here to make sure you get the best possible experience from your next ultra-premium 